So for my first question, are there any songs that you wish that made the final cut from the first Iron Maiden record that didn't make? Uh, that didn't get on the album? Yes. Um, well, I think, as I said many times, that we had um, we had an, all the songs for the first two albums. Um, but basically, the decision um, the decision what goes on the first album or the second album uh, or what gets left off is down to Steve. Uh, Steve was the one that uh, chose the songs. I think at the time I was all the songs were very new to me, so I think uh, Steve made the, the right choice of um, for the first album. Whether or not on Killers, um, there might have been a couple of songs that could have gone on Killers that never went on Killers, but I, I, I didn't get the chance to record it. So um, um, I must say that I'm quite happy with the, the decision, the selection of songs that he, that he chose, yeah. And after your time in Iron Maiden, were you invited to maybe a performance with the band? Was I? Ever invited to perform with the band? What, made them? Yes. No, not, not after. You don't really get invited until uh, mm. the end. You know, they, you have a new, a new lineup, a new, you know, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't ask, they wouldn't get rid of Paul Diano and get Bruce in and then invite Diano back to play. And you wouldn't get Nico in and ask Clive to come back. You know, once you make your decision to to change the lineup of the band, that's what you stick to. Uh, and what would you say it's your band or artist that it's like a guilty pleasure? Oh, could you, sorry, repeat that again. What band or artist would you say it's like your guilty pleasure? Gifted pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Yeah. Um, what what listening to yes. what band or artist well it was quite clear that rob didn't like me listening to the eagles but that's not a guilty pleasure that's because i love the band um i don't um i, I I'm, I'm not sure of the question because um i don't see the point of listening to songs that i don't like so i would always listen to something I enjoy listening to and if it's something new that I don't like then I would sort of switch it off but um, I don't understand with the guilty the guilty pleasure it's like an expression like something that you're like a little bit of shame of listening to. oh no never see uh, if um, if the radio comes on sorry about that if the radio comes on and there's something that I can't stand then I would just switch it off. But no, they're, they're, every, all the songs I listen to are stuff that, um, that I love and I don't mind people knowing, knowing that I like it. And let's say you're in the car driving and listening to some music and all of a sudden a song comes up that you need to hand back, hand back to. Which is the song? I need to... Head bang to. Head bang? Yeah. It, I don't really headbang because my me, me neck aches, see? Um, and I wouldn't headbang while I was driving because I'd end up killing myself. But, yeah, but there are, there are, there are songs that, you know, it reminds me of the, of the um, what is it, the film with um, the two guys, uh, with Queen. Um, it, there are some songs that, you know, you could be driving the car and uh, Phil Collins within the air tonight, you can't help but, you know, do 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 you know, the drum fill. So there's loads of songs there, but I don't know about headbanging. I think I'd rather, I'd rather just sing along and, and, you know, do the harmonies to the chorus or something, you know. Okay. I don't know. And Eddie the Hat is probably one of the most iconic uh, metal mascots of all time. From all of his versions, which one is your favorite? Um, well, you might have seen the original first skull, which was a uh, an idea from Dave Lights. It was a, just a skull with two light bulbs for his eyes. And when when you're talking about when the band had no money. Um, 
It's them kind of things that you make yourself. Dave made it with his own hands on a bit of wood and, a, and, and put the head on the bit of wood, you know. And it's, it's little things like that, that when you've got no money, you, um, you think back at how you made something to sit on the stage that was probably so bad and cheap, but at then, that time, it was epic, you know, a smoke bomb coming out of his mouth, like a bit of smoke. So there's, there's loads of little things like that, but I think the, the first one was this, the, when, when, when we did the first album and uh, we saw the artwork for the first album, I thought, yeah, wow, you see that in a record shop, that, that's like epic. Yeah. And you were talking a little bit about uh, the 96-2 with Clive Bird on Japan. Do you have any good memories from that time? Oh yeah, well all, all the tours in Japan with um, Brian Mantis, we always had lots and lots of great memories. Um, as I said, the 15 years went by really quick, so um, it, we must have been having a good time if, if it went back that quick. Um, the, the one with Clive, as I said, I wasn't sure whether or not he was feeling okay, so I remember having great times with Clive, but there were also there were also little setbacks on that tour, recording that album because we had Gary Barden singing, and Gary Barden doesn't rest his voice very well, and um, we found a couple of the songs on the album, uh, his voice wasn't he, whether he had a cold or suffered a little bit with a sore throat, but he was struggling with the vocal. So there's lots of great memories, but also you also remember the, the, the little drop setbacks, you know. Okay, so I just want to say thank you, Dennis. It was an honor. Oh, thank no, you thank you very much. Thank you.